Hello, Rebooters. Welcome and thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited for episode two of the Reboot Your Life and Reboot Revolution. Um, and today we're talking to another wonderful guest who's going to tell us about her personal life reboot and about her journey to this present moment and help inspire us and show us that we can always rise back up. We can always get back up and obstacles are just pivot points that help us get to our new destinations. So Shane, thank you so much for being here. And would you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yes. Thank you, Linda, for having me. Yes, um, thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you're, um, if you know me at all, I like to be a part of different things. So many people call me a serial entrepreneur because I love, I, I love dabbling in all different types of projects and businesses that I enjoy and I'm passionate about. Um, so I guess I, so for one, my first business was a marketing agency. And then from there, I branched to e-commerce stores. Um, I loved to travel. So I ended up becoming a certified travel agent. And um, from there, it just kind of took off and I'm going to be in a mompreneur's memoirs book. So I, I'm just in so many different things. <laughs> <You're> my <laughs> kind of girl, Shane. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I just kind of figure why put yourself in one box? If you like so many things and you want to try it out, go for it. So that's pretty much how I've always done my businesses. You are you are preaching to a like-minded soul. You know, it's funny because when I was teaching, I would say like, I'm teaching, but I would always have that other story. Like, oh, I'm also writing a book and I'm also doing this. And uh, right. people were like, what? That, what are you doing so many things for? And, and then mm -hmm. even when I left teaching and started, you know, my online adventures, it was the same. It was like, well, I'm starting an online school. I'm starting a blog. I'm starting a book. <laughs> I'm finishing my book. So I love that. That's awesome. Awesome. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey to this point and, and how you became interested in all these different things. Yeah. So for me, working remotely started back in 2012 when it was very taboo. No one really knew that you could make money from home. Everyone thought it was a scam during that time. Yeah. So it all kind of started where I was doing marketing for Fortune 500 companies. I was my own boss. I loved it. And I was like, how can I continue this on? So I started taking clients over the years and it grew to a point where I needed to have a team because eventually you know, we're all human, we get burnt out. And I kind of learned the trick to outsourcing. So I'm like, okay, why don't I get, um, why don't I create an agency out of this? I can take on more clients. I could have people on my team that are specialized in different things that I don't know how to do, mm. like graphic design, accounting, things that I could serve more clients with skills I didn't have. So that's how that started. And then, um, so then it continued on where I became a mom in 2016. And this is kind of where everything blew wide open for me. Hmm. Um, so as you can hear my toddler in the back. Which I love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's always when you're on the phone, right? Yeah, well, okay, that's mompreneur life. So right, right. Yeah. So, um, hi, so for me, okay, he's probably going to join us now. He wants <laughs> to say hi to everybody. Hey. Can you say hi? Let's say hi, Dylan. Oh, it's okay. Your son is Dylan? Yes. Hi, my son is Dylan as well. Really? Yeah. How old is your son? My son's eight. My son's okay, eight. he's three. So okay. he nice just to turned three. Dylan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in 2016, that's when I found out I was pregnant with this beautiful boy. And um, so from there, it honestly, so the biggest thing that happened to us was my father-in-law passed away. And, and that was three days before my son was born. So it just kind of caused a ripple effect of um, sad events. And so from there, I was like, okay, um, I just need to continue on. Like there's, even though we're going through this right now, you know, a death and a, the birth of a child, I just got to figure out how to keep, um, keep up with my business. So I was a military spouse at that time. Mm. I was living on the East Coast and we were in transition to moving back to California where our home state is. So from there, a lot of things happened with our family and to a point where I became a single mom in the midst of all of this. And my son was under two and I was like, how, like, how am I going to, you know, continue on? But I think one thing I've been really good at just from my upbringing and just being a military spouse and learning to have that grit, no matter mm. what is going on in your life to continue yes. on. 
I had to choose like, am I going to let this, all these chain of events of tragedy keep me down and fail? Or am I going to push through and not give up because I can't, I have a son, you know, I have to continue on. I have a team. I had people that were relying on me. So it really took a lot of just, I don't even know how to describe it, but like the inner Inner strength. strength. Yes. 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 The inner strength, resiliency, and, you know, never allowing like your circumstances to keep you back. And that's one thing I guess I didn't realize was my strong suit until recently was, wow, look at what I've accomplished all on my own with my son in tow and he's growing. I I don't know. It's just, it's been so crazy. And of course there's times where you doubt yourself. You think, is this going to work? Am I going to have to scale back? Like what's going to happen? So I'm glad that um, I just, I never gave up and I leaned in for support where I could. And along the way, I found more things I was passionate about and that helped, you know, that worked out. So that's, that's the biggest part. Yeah. (laughs) You know, uh, first of all, congratulations, because that grit and that determination and that life force that that was telling you, like, as, as hard as this is, we are on a life mission, so we keep plowing forward, and it has so much to teach. I have to tell you, like, in the moments where I've been at my lows, I have really tethered myself to stories like yours, where I saw people say, it's hard. I'm not, no one's, no one's negating or, or, um, arguing the fact that those moments aren't good and we never want to, we never want to experience them. But what I'm passionate about and what I'm on a mission to do is show like the rainbow after the storm, you know, and to show if we could in our moments of deep sorrow and pain and despair, see the hope that's, that's just, who knows how far around the corner. Sometimes it's a little farther down, but sometimes it's just right there. Maybe it's the next step you take or right, maybe right. It's four steps you take, or maybe it's the third hundredth, you know, the 300th step you exactly. take, but it's there. And there's so much, like you said, you found passions along the way. Like as we go through that, um, obstacle, we learn about ourselves, things that otherwise exactly. would not have blossomed and opened up. Exactly. Um, so tell us the evolution. So you kind of pushed forward and, and like continue and tell us a little bit about how that blossomed for you. Yeah. So I think, Aside you know, beautiful little boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think honestly, um, especially since, I mean, I was in a 10 year marriage. So for me, I've never, and that was for most of my adult life, obviously. So for me, I was kind of like, how do I, you know, navigate being alone? You know, like I kind of had to learn how to be my own person, not a wife, not a mom, not, you know, I really had to dig deep and figure out like, yeah, who I am, what am I interested in? And just kind of go through like what's possible, like for me. So with the evolution of that. So I had every plan to move back to my hometown because I'm currently in the Bay area. I'm from Elk Grove, California. And I was like, I just need to move away. I wanted to have a fresh start after we decided to separate. And so when that didn't happen, it's just funny. Like when you look back in time and you're like, ah, now I see why that wasn't meant to happen. Or now I see why I was meant to stay here and not move. So during that time, I did a lot of networking events. I, um, I met a lot of like-minded people in the Bay Area since everyone's very business-minded and tech-savvy. And so I'm kind of in the capital of that um, where everyone's just trying to make it and launch businesses. So during that time, I was very blessed and lucky enough to meet um, some really great people that ended up becoming business partners. So that's where I also learned, like, I can't always do things by myself. It's really nice to have other people that can, you can bounce ideas with and they can help you bring your ideas to life. So that's exactly like what happened is um, I made two wonderful business partners. Um, My parents also launched um, their own home business. And so it just kind of, everything just like grew like over time. And 
Um, and then in the midst of all of this, I also had a cancer scare. Mm. So I was like, it, you know, the low felt low for a very long time. It was just kind of like, what is this going to stop? Exactly. And I'm like, I'm all alone here. Like what is like, why? I genuinely was questioning. Right. I was like, I was questioning, like, what is the purpose of all of this? I just, I couldn't understand it at the time. And thankfully, um, I call it the rabbit hole. Like when you start in one place and you kind of just keep following the trail, (laughs) following the trail, and then you end up where you are. So, um, so yeah, so much. Yeah. I love that so much. You know, um, so many, uh, so much of our programming as human beings, so much of our programming, programming as women, we're told like, especially, you know, if someone tells you they're a single mom, there's oftentimes a stigma and an empathy like, oh, that, you know, like, yeah. oh, you, you're limited. You're a single mom. This is, this is your box because yeah, that's who you are. That's yeah. who you are. And this is only what you can do as a single mom. You know, your, your capacity to grow outside of that box is going to be pretty hard and it is hard. However, oh, yeah. I think some of the skills that make, and I'm, I, I'm not speaking from experience. I will disclose in, in full disclosure. I, I am married. However, my husband travels for work. And so for very, very, you know, I'd say 70% of the year, he's not here. Although oh. he's emotionally present. Um, mm-hmm. he's not always physically present, but, um, the thing is the skills that make you the superhero single mom also give you the ability to burst through any box that society puts you in. It's those skills of, you know, budgeting and time management and balance. You're everything. You're everything. And that, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine a better entrepreneur skill set than being a single parent. So I think that um, it's amazing to watch people break stigmas and to say, you know, I know what society tells me that this is supposed to look like, but in fact, it's going to look different for me and my family because I choose, you know, and like you said, there's that rabbit hole where sometimes it's a pile up. It's like a car accident. And then before you know it, it's just two cars, but they've brought everybody into the picture. And now it's like a car pile up. Um, and it's just like one thing after another. Um, if you have to take a break, it's okay. No, it's okay. Oh, I just okay. had someone ask me a question. Yeah. Um, um, and so for you to really, number one, it's okay. You know, we don't acknowledge okay. our moments and say, this is really hard. And I'm <laughs> desperately trying to keep <laughs> my head above water. Um, right. That, that's exactly how it felt for sure. Like there were times where I was like, I really don't think I can carry on like this or I'm going to have to throw in the towel. Like, you know, there's just so many negative thoughts sometimes when you're in those moments, especially when I was getting pounded with so many multiple negative events. Right. But eventually you just, I had to find a way to just change that mindset. And so I'm a huge believer in working on your mindset and doing mindset work, because when you get rid of those limiting beliefs, when you get rid of those those negative thoughts that are constantly there. Um, and I suffer from anxiety. So I'm, I, I definitely had times where I'm like, I need to, you know, manage this properly. So, um, so yeah, for me, it definitely, there, there's a lot of inner work you got to do when you're going through that type of stuff and you just cannot allow those things to stop you. That's, Absolutely. that's always what I tell people. Yeah, because that's the best advice you could give people. And, you know, um, I was raised where like you give everything as a mother, you, you aren't supposed to have anything left for yourself. My upbringing was like, you're a mom, so it's not about you anymore. It's about them and them and them and them and them and them and them. And, them. and what you find, what I found, which, which is a huge part of the book that I wrote, um, is that part of the reason I was suffering from such a dip, part of the reason my low went so low is because I was on empty and instead of acknowledging the emptiness and saying, wait, like I'm no good to anybody unless I right. can breathe. I just kept going exactly. and going because it was like, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm just supposed mm-hmm. to give and give and give. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until exactly what you said, I, I kind of challenged my darkness and said, what is going on? Like, why, why are you feeling this way? And how are you going to get out of it? At some point you're like, okay, what gives? 
Um, exactly. And I just said, you need to find your smile, your spark, your passions, and that will take time away from your children, but you can't parent unless you do that. You're exactly. only going to be less of a mother to these babies when you're always in a anxious, you know, when you're just seeking something that is there, you just have to tap in and so, um, which is yeah, harder to do totally when you're true. a single parent, right? Oh, absolutely. I think for me too, is like, like when my son was very young, especially when from newborn to one years old, all I did, I was drained constantly because I had to do everything. I was const I was always taking care of him. I had to, this is when my marketing agency was still brand new. So I was still trying to figure out like, how can I get all of my team members you know, to come up with a system and get that running smoothly. And one thing that I learned from someone, I can't remember who told me this, but you can't, you can't give, um, you basically can't give yourself to people when your cup is empty. And there's a saying with that. I know I'm not saying it properly right no, now, but you yeah, get you what I mean. You can't give from an empty cup. Perfect. Yeah. That's exactly yes, what it, yeah. Of course. The analogy in my book is like me flying to an event. It was the first time I had ever left my children and I was like having a major panic attack on the airplane. It's hard to leave for your children, panic attack. especially like, for the first time. Oh where my, my water was going like this and the lady next yeah, to me was I like, had, yes. what is happening to her right now? Yeah. When I had to take my, bus my, um, a, my first business trip away when my son was um, little, it was to Boston. And it was mm -hmm. only for like three days because I had <laughs> to go That was mine. With... It was only three Yeah, days. it was not very long, but it was the fact <laughs> it that like it was- forever. Like, Yes. It was on the other side of the country. I had to do some work with a client and I was like, man, this is gonna be really hard. And I was like, my parents were constantly keeping me updated on what was going on. And at least after that, it's cut, it's kind of like ripping a bandaid off. Like yes. once you do it once, it just gets easier and easier. And, um, and I think, you know, as they get older, it's a little bit better. Cause then now they can call they don't you. They do as much. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But I just remember like what I write about is being on the airplane and I always used to hear that announcement about like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, if the airbag should deploy, please put yours on before your child's. And I remember forever and ever going, what? what? Who would like, yeah. Who would do that? I would let myself go and mask my children. That makes no sense. And then yeah. on the very first trip away from my kids, when I was on the airplane having a full-fledged, I don't know what panic attack, like one of the worst I've ever had in my life, she, the announcement came on because I had it. Like I, I was seriously like, get off the plane, get off the plane. And the announcement came on and I was, it was my aha moment in life. It changed me forever because I realized, like, wait a minute, if I pass out, if I can't breathe, if I have no air then there's no way i can save them exactly no i can help them and i i mean it it was like a spiritual download i was yeah like, something finally clicked <laughs> something clicked like i have to breathe i have to do something for myself and give myself oxygen and space and a direction and goals and passion and wake up from this because that's how i best serve my family no, absolutely. And I think for me too, um, I love I, what you said. Yeah, no, it, I think like it, it's so true. And you know what? My therapist actually told me that because I'm very big on mental health and, um, and I, I'm definitely an advocate for all of that. Yes. Um, she, I remember she had asked me one time, like, especially this is one of the prime moments of when I was a single mom. Um, she was like, if she said something along the lines, like, it's something like similar to the airplane. Like, who would you save first, your son or yourself? And of course, my first immediate answer was my son, of course. <laughs> exactly. But she was like, but how are you, how, who's going to take care of him if something happens to you? And so it's just kind of one of those things that you kind of have to exercise and remind yourself that you, especially for me, I'm a one woman show at home, yeah. right? Like yeah. I have to do it all. Yeah. So I've learned that I have to take time for myself to take care of myself or I cannot give what I need to give for all these kids. My dogs are my kids too. So I have three kids. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, of course. Yeah. So what are some of the mindsets um, that change that kind of, what are some of the big motivators and, 
you know, things that when you were really thinking, why is this all happening? It's just compounding. And what are some of the big spotlights that kind of plucked you out of the trenches? Yeah. So one, I know this is a very common um, limiting belief, but for a long time, I was like, I'm not enough. Hmm. Like I, that is that's a lie. Belief, right? Yeah. That's a lie that we tell ourselves, like we're not enough because for instance, like when you're trying, especially for me, I was a new mom. I was trying to learn how to parent, right? Like there's no book on how to be a perfect parent. So like on really hard days when like the tantrums were crazy and my dogs weren't listening. And I was like, I just must not be enough for them because no one is, you know, um, I just felt alone. And so one of those things I had to do was, um, with my, my business coach, she's the one who helped me really get the limiting beliefs out. Um, especially just trying, it's, I guess it's a way to like rewire your brain, right? Mm. To change the way you yes. think. Turns, yes. Yeah. And Joe Dispenza talks about it all the time, how you could literally like the neurons could reattach and, and recreate your belief system. Right. And so that's why like my friend, I'm so sorry. Of course, every alert is going off during these times. <laughs> Real life. We love it. Working from home. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, another friend of mine who also does spiritual work, um, she also helps with mindset shifts as well. So I think it's, especially when you're in a low, I think you just have to kind of check in with yourself. Like, where do I need support? where, where are parts of my life that I can improve on just me? Because whatever vibe or whatever, um, yeah, I guess vibe that I'm putting off, that's what's going to kind of attract because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in law of attraction. So of course, if you're constantly thinking negative, negative things are going to happen, period. And magnetic system. Exactly. And during when I was, you know, when we got hit with my father-in-law passing away and then my marriage ending for a while, I was like, how, you know, like, am I attracting negative? Like, I really had to think to myself, like, what am I doing? That's part that's of this, co- yeah. you know, like, how is this happening? Um, so I think for me, that was kind of like the time where I'm like, okay, for years, I never, I mean, when I, when I was married, my focus was my husband. I always, I was, I guess I got used to serving him because he was the one active duty military. Cause in a sense, I kind of put myself as second because I was like, well, his needs come first before mine because his job is so important. So I need to make sure that he's cared I'm for. taking care of him. Yeah. So I guess, you know, I didn't realize this at the time, but that was not, I, I guess there wasn't as much of a balance as I thought there was now that I look back and I'm like, Oh, I really wasn't filling my own cup. I was feeling everyone else's but my own. So that it makes sense on why I was always so fatigued. That makes sense on why I, I always, I wasn't taking care of myself. So exactly. it, it's, it may sound selfish to some to like put yourself first, but honestly, you have to, like, I think it sounds selfish to. until you like, I think when you're in that mindset, it sounds selfish, which is why you're in that mindset. But as yeah. soon as you break that barrier and you realize that you are one of the important people, like yes, you are just as important as the people you care for. Once you exactly. value yourself, the extent that you value those you love and you become part of the puzzle, then you realize there's, it, it, it's, it's less selfish to be selfless than the other way around. Right. Um, So I couldn't agree with you more. And it's funny because I had this conversation, um, you know, in writing the book when my husband and I were talking about the book being a big part of, you know, my marriage was a big part of the book. Um, And it was funny because I said something like that. I made, you were traveling, you were working, making, although I was working, his income was far greater than mine. So the lifestyle and taking care of making sure he could do the things he needed to do took precedent. Um, which also just like you said, make made me feel like second place. And when we had that talk, he was like, I, I didn't impose that on you. I never asked you to do right. that. It, exactly, I never told yeah. you to give up anything for yes. it like, you're right. You know, I, yeah. I made that decision all by myself, like a big girl and then held you responsible for the decisions I made. Right. Right. Yeah, no, that's exactly 
that was part of our um, conversations earlier on. And, you know, like I said, like with my therapist, I had to figure all of that out. Cause yeah, like it's I a said, journey. I, it, it definitely, oh my gosh, yes, journey. And it's been for me um, a three year journey. So I feel like it's come in phases. And one thing I like to call like this, the newest chapter of my life, really reinventing myself, putting my health first, because I see major differences and positives on how I perform now that I do take very good care of myself versus before when I took care of everyone else before me, it's night and day. Night like, and wow. day. I love that you said that. Thank yeah. you Shane, for saying that. Yeah. I was just like, I wish I would have realized this before, but you know, I think because there's so many new changes going on in our life, it, it was just kind of like, you know, we were just doing the best we could honestly. And, um, I think over time, yeah, you just, you just learn to figure that out. And, um, and I think when we become moms, there's a part of us that, um, attaches sacrifice as a synonym for love, you know, yes. like I now have this yes. little human. And so my responsibility is to be the best mom that I can be and to sacrifice my dreams and hopes. And just all I need to do is make sure that their hopes and dreams and, but it's like, how do we teach that little being to go after their passions, hopes, and dreams when we don't emulate that? Exactly. When we don't do that. We need to lead by example. A hundred percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's funny because earlier on when I was, when my son was a newborn, when I was still trying to figure out like, how do I take care of myself? How do I, um, yeah, yeah, he's playing in his little kitchen right now. As it should be. <laughs> You know, with this music on, I swear it's not usually like this, but it's just always when you have something going on. Um, <laughs> they know it's like that kid intuition. Hey, I swear, I, right it's, now would be a good time. It's so real. Um, but yes, yeah, so like you said, it's real life. Um, so yeah, I think earlier on when I was trying to navigate, um, one thing that I definitely had to get, um, get used to was asking for help, right? Oh. So I think you know, after the first time my parents watched my son, when I had to go to Boston, I was like, okay, perfect. And then now it's become like a regular schedule where at least once or twice a month, my parents will take my son for a couple of days. And during those days, I put a lot of emphasis on self-care. I take a lot of all the children, even the dogs. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's your breathe yeah. time. No, absolutely. Um, I think during that time um, for self-care, that's when I do, you know, a lot of my meditations. That's when I mm. journal. I mean, I like to, um, I have a lot of adult coloring books and it may sound silly to some, but it actually is a really great stress relief. It's an outlet. I love that. Yes. yes. You know, we're so hung up on what like if somebody says, oh, meditation or yoga, and those things are fantastic. I mean, they're healing and there's no doubt about it. But, um, you know, on, on yesterday's episode, um, Sarah and I were talking about how we like to, you know, instead of meditate, we do the opposite. We're like high energy dancing, loud nice. music, you know, yeah. and it doesn't matter what that purge looks like for you, as long as it has the desired outcome yes exactly the same effect like the same effect is yeah. it's that catharsism cathartic right. you know like this is what i need right now to just release this emotion and yeah it's super important to do that because it's when we lock it all in and try to be everything to everyone and tell ourselves that like oh okay you haven't been okay for 3.2 minutes okay yeah. time is ticking that's long enough you know but maybe today you need an hour um but we we need to tap in and ask ourselves and talk to ourselves you know and just say what do you need right now and how can i work my family around this moment to provide myself with the things that i need and to show them that when they're in need they deserve to be present for themselves right and i just love that now since i've made all these different changes lifestyle changes I feel more present than I ever have before. I love that. And it has just been so, <gasps> that was so life changing. Thing to say. Yeah. And, you know, I can, I can actually say like, even after all those things happened to me, I'm still, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm still, I still look back and I, 
I see some of it as blessings in disguise. Um, I, of course, we like to question why, 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 like, you know, why did this happen? But I think over time, like, you get that aha moment, like, that's why this was meant to happen. Like, I know personally, like, if, um, I think to really, like, not find myself, but really understand who I am and what I was put on this earth to do, because another thing I discovered recently is human design, oh, and I don't know if yes. you're familiar with human design. <laughs> I have yeah. actually been looking into that. There was that, and there was another one you that- um, have to. Yes, like, so I'm a projector. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I ended up being a manifester, and I was like, huh, what does that mean? And so I have a, a friend in business who all she does is human design readings, and she gives people, you know, an explanation mm. on, you know. Um, an explanation. Yeah, so an explanation of what their chart means and how to tie it into their business. And so for mine, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. Like, it was another part of my journey where I'm like, now I get why I act this way or this way and why I should be doing this in my business. <laughs> and so um, for me, I think finding these little like clues, it's kind of like pieces of the puzzle. And yeah. so I, part of my human design is that I like to investigate, which has been the truest thing ever, because since the since I was really young, I just love to learn everything I could. Yeah, get all your and little clues. Yes. And so I, so when she told me that, I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's why I love like, um, just learning everything I can applying it to where it makes sense. And, um, so yeah, that has been another game changer for me, like understanding who I am and what, what I'm supposed to do in my businesses. So if you haven't fig um, gone through that with human design, you need to. I Absolutely. To yeah, all I of your audience. Too. I, I, I think I kind of avoided it for a while because I, I am such an anti-label person, you know? Oh yeah. no, if, once I know, then I'm like locked into a box. But, the, but that's not exactly true. What I've learned is that, yeah, you just find out a little bit about your personality traits and that doesn't mean you can't jump boxes. It just oh, means absolutely. like, yeah. oh, it explains a lot of why up until now I've been reacting to things the way that I have, you know, and what my life reboot taught me. And I, it sounds as if maybe it, um, that's a common thread between all of us who have had any kind of a reboot in our life is that I know that there I don't know, but I assume that there will come another point where things dip back down or things don't right. work out the way I planned or my expectations haven't been met or there's sadness, you know, but what I, my biggest takeaway from my own life reboot is that as painful as it will be to get through it, you know, when, when you're coming back out um, new things that are always behind it. You know, I call it the painful pivot because oh, I love that pain pivots you to your new horizon, your new sun, your new journey, your new adventure. And so yeah. as much as it hurts, I, I remind myself like this is guiding you somewhere great. This is guiding you somewhere great. And it just helps kind of cushion the pain. It doesn't take it away. It just, helps you know that all right I just gotta survive this because this is a sign that beautiful things are coming absolutely and you know what I love that you mentioned that because one of the things I refer this phase of my life is called my phoenix chapter mm. and you know how phoenixes yes, they rise they from the ashes the and they are reborn and I rem so I've been a huge Harry Potter fan since like the beginning and for some reason, I've always been kind of fascinated with the Phoenix bird, that Dumbledore. I don't know if you're familiar with Harry Potter like <laughs> yes. that. Um, yeah, I have a 12 and 8, so. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I was kind of like, huh, the Phoenix. And then so I kind of dug deeper on what that means. And I was just like, wow, I love the symbolism behind that. Mm -hmm. And so anytime I'm like, you know, it's not the best of days and I'm just kind of like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I just remind myself, it's, it's your Phoenix chapter. It's your Phoenix chapter. It's, it, you're only going to rise and this is not going to set you back. You just have, just use this as a learning experience on what you can take away, yes. turn it into a positive and you're going to come out on top yeah. always. Absolutely. Yeah. And it just takes a little trust and a little faith that the universe has our back and that it's always Absolutely. working for our greatest and highest good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I look back, I'm like, if like, you know, other things that have happened in my life, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have met this person. And that exactly. person wouldn't have led me to this. Like, I do that. I kind of look back at the chain of events and I'm like, 
huh, I'm really glad I ended up living there. Like for, like for instance, part of my story is the first duty station we lived at was in Texas. Um, oh, we're and, in Texas. And, um, so it was El Paso. For okay. Yes. Yeah. So when I lived there, um, I came across this woman who she was posting about working from home and because of her, that's what started my whole journey of being working remote, always trying to have that flexible schedule because another part of, you know, military life is you have to be ready to move, you yeah. know, every couple of years, exactly. sometime sooner. And so I really wanted to keep the flexibility of my schedule because what was my plan? I need to be flexible for my husband's schedule and where we have to move. And it was never about me. Like I right. always felt like I was just a support no one, role. Exactly. So where you wanted to live was insignificant in the scheme it, of things because yeah. you had a priority of following his, his career. Right. right. Whether I liked it or not, we were going to move there. And, but for me at the time, I was like, of course I'm happy to do it. Like, <laughs> this is my family. Like, why wouldn't I? And I, you know, on the positive side, I'm like, okay, like at least, you know, I have this opportunity to live in different areas and meet new people. And because of those duty stations, I made amazing best friends throughout that, that are very much like supportive and a part of my life till this day. So that's why for me, like, I, I mean, in the beginning, of course, like, I was like, man, like I, for a while I regretted, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have you know, put my life on pause for someone else for how many years, like maybe I shouldn't have, but then when you have that mindset shift and then you really are in tune with, you know, how much you've progressed as a person and understanding the bigger picture. I love to look at the grand scheme of things versus the individual events because that's when you can drive yourself crazy. Like, absolutely. So my husband, you know, I met my husband in the movie business before I was a teacher, I was in the movie business and it's like the pan out. It's like when you're zoomed in, you're like, oh, this cup is pink and it's only pink and it's just pink. And then when you pan out, you're like, well, it's pink and black. Oh, and then you pan out more. Oh, and there's a whiteboard behind it. And you just start Mm -hmm. to see that. Yes all the surroundings, all of what's really happening behind the scenes right, right. in your focused problem. Right. Yeah. I love so, that. Yeah. So that's where, so I've literally taken everything I've learned over the years and the strengths I've learned that I have and just, I just apply it wherever possible. And I mean, especially with COVID. So I was supposed to launch this, this business with one of my partners um, and I can't give too much detail, but it is a food truck. Okay. Like, yeah. So it was going to be a food How truck exciting. in the Bay area. Yeah. And we had, we were ready to go. We, we had everything mapped out and then COVID and we're like, and for a while I was like, darn it. Like, I wish Just we had launched that. Yeah. I was like, cause it was going to be a very, it was a very great idea and it still is. We still plan on doing it. Like once things um, get back to somewhat normal, um, But I was just kind of like, I'm so glad we didn't launch six months ago when we had thought or whatever, because then we would have been out of, out of commission here. Like we would have been stuck with all of these expenses. And so that's, that's kind of like worked out. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of like why for me, like when things don't work out in my timing, I don't even question it anymore. I'm just kind of like, okay, it just was not meant to be at this this certain time. There's a reason for this, and I, then I, I end up that's appreciating where all it. Our wisdom comes from. Our wisdom comes from our pain, and it's a beautiful process. We just, you know, unfortunately, it's hindsight. So, uh, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, for now, especially since you know everything's so unpredictable these days, we don't know where things are going to go with this pandemic. Yep. Um, I just, for me, I, once again, I was like, I'm not going to let this pandemic stop me. If anything, I'm going to keep pushing for what I can do. So my biggest emphasis has been the e-commerce stores because that's more of passive income. Yeah. And that's and another key. Yeah. That's such yeah, an like, important part of everyone's life right now. Right. And so yes. for me, so I was kind of like, yes, yes. And I, I really didn't want to let that die. I was like, no, like, I would just kind of want to see what's going to happen. So, um, so luckily it ended up, it ended up working out. It's still very much lucrative. And so I'm like, okay, thank God. Because another thing I had to learn, you know, while being an entrepreneur and being a mom is I don't always want to have to work for every hour. Like, I don't want to have to, I don't want want my, to be able to control your time. 
Yes. Yes. I wanted that time freedom. I didn't want to have to, you know, work hourly or, you know, depend on like certain packages from clients. I'm like, I want to create in income streams where I don't have to worry. And it's a drop shipping model. So I don't have inventory. I don't have to like do any, any of that. I have a team that manages, you know, all the customer um, communications and orders. So it's kind of like, yeah, everyone's like, in their zone of genius doing what they do best. So it all works. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so my only job there is just to make sure that, um, you know, that everything's running smoothly. Um, I can, I give my input, input to the graphic design people for the designs. So, um, yeah. So for me, I think if anyone wants to get into the world of business, definitely look for ways to make passive income. That way it's money that you're getting without having to work every minute. <laughs> you know, you can make money while you sleep. And so, um, so that's another business model that I always tell people is like, if you can get passive income, do it. Like you will not now, regret do you it. Do you do any coaching on helping people to learn about the passive income system or how to no. develop? Actually, I don't. Yeah. So you know, what? <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned that because some I was talking to someone the other day and they're like, you know what? I think you should get into coaching and consulting. And I was like, for what though? Like, you know, I was just like, what would I teach people? And they're like, do you realize like how much knowledge and experience you have? And I was like, well, yeah, I, I know. Absolutely. Because just listening to you right now and you're like, you know, passive income, I, you hear it all the time and I know what a, what a blessing it could be, but it's like, yeah. well, what would that look like? How could someone, because, you know, going from working in a brick and mortar school as an elementary school teacher to becoming an online entrepreneur and, and, and it, what goes into that is, and like you said, yeah. I don't know how to do all the things. And so if someone is there to say, Hey, I'm going to coach you. You want to make passive income. I'm going to take you, walk you through the process. I'm going to tell you some tips and I'm going to shorten your learning curve. Cause I've already lived this long and done this much in there, yeah. but because I'm going to take all my wisdom and kind of package it and offer to you at a value that shortens your curve. And who doesn't want that? Right. Right. You know that. Oh, oh. Ladies huh. and gentlemen, stay Idea. tuned. <laughs> like, and Shane will give us her contact information yeah. on how she can coach us through making passive income. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love, I mean, I love helping people already. Like there's so like, especially for me, like with the, the businesses I've launched locally, you know, um, I always bring in my family and friends because I'm just like, Hey, like if I can, um, you know, create a way for you to like make yeah. some money, especially during this pandemic. Like I can tell you about the, one of the latest launches I've um, done is, um, have you heard of the company Baby Quip at all? Nope. Okay. So Baby Quip is a baby gear rental company. So for instance, say you were traveling to, I don't know, to LA. That's and you did genius. Cause I know yeah. you're going with this. Yeah. So say, you know, you don't want to pack the, the pack and play or the toys or just a bunch of different baby gear, a crib. Cause how could you, you know, cause there's crib. so much stuff, too much stuff. Like I, I, we actually went to Seattle recently and I got a travel car seat for a reason. It's an eight pound, um, car seat that folds and has a travel bag. Super and sure convenient. beats the other like thing I used to lug around with my baby. Huge, yeah. So this thing is like actually pretty new. It, I think it only it's only like a year or two old. Um, but yeah, so this company they recently acquired a clean a baby gear cleaning company. So baby clip reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, we would love to see if you can you know work the Bay Area for that. And I was like huh, that'd be kind of cool. Like, you know, I'm, of course I'm a mom. I understand like the, the importance, importance. of sanitization yes. and, you know, and I'm very OCD. So I'm so organized. And, um, so what, long story short, what ended up happening is they brought me on and now I've launched with a team here in the Bay area where if you need baby gear cleaned, we do either house calls, but most people are opting in for contactless pickup and drop off. And then, um, we, we have your um, baby gear sanitized and clean for you within 24 hours, bring it back and it's good as new. And um, fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. So um, we'll link that as well. So people, yeah, for sure. Now, if they link, is it only people in the Bay area or 
um, for that specific, but baby quip is nationwide. Okay. So if say you're like, yeah, on the East coast or anywhere okay. else, um, you could opt in for that. Um, I just like that for us, we're the first in the Bay area to do, to offer this awesome. service. So I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. You it know, is like wonderful. I can, and it's, I mean, there isn't a more relevant time to have your baby items sanitized than now. Yeah. It's and like, like up top of the list, it would be for me if my babies were still small. Exactly. And like, I was learning crazy facts of like, oh, like um, a stroller yeah. can be as dirty as a toilet seat. I don't like, have what? any doubt about that. No, a same. So I was like, oh my gosh. And like, they were telling us that some people don't clean their car seat. They only clean it like once a year or so, which I understand. Like we're so- Well, busy. even when you think like the wheels of the baby strollers, so many people um, house the strollers inside because they don't want to get it, have it stolen or whatever. Yeah. But think about where the wheels, it's like driving your car inside your house, you know? Exactly. So, so that's just well, another that's pretty thing. pretty awesome. Yeah. So that's been my latest venture that I'm doing out here in the Bay area. But I mean, I am like literally all over the place. So it's and kind of soon a to be coach soon to be coach. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put that out in the universe. That's yes, exactly. Um, I believe in it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, honestly, I thank you because every one of you who meet with me and talk about your life reboot and talk about how you broke through barriers is only meant to encourage and inspire women who are feeling like they're just one step where we were one step ago for us and yeah. for them to see what's possible is my mission and so for you to be part of that and for you to share your amazing inspirational story i thank you from the bottom of my heart oh, and thank you I'm so much so, so glad to connect with you i will make sure that everybody has a way to connect with you for 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 whatever they may want or need um yeah and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to give everybody in Life Reboot um, a, a little piece of your life. Thank you, Shane. Yes. No, honestly, this, for me, what I've learned too, is it's very healing to talk about your story. Yeah. And, you know, being a part of Mompreneur's memoirs was step one for me. I was like, okay, this is, honestly, it was emotional writing it because I'm like, okay, I'm like sharing like a very like sensitive part of my life. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, my story could definitely help others that are going through something similar and worth if they're at where I was a year ago, two years ago. Um, I will say uh, me and my child's father are in a great co-parenting relationship mm, now. So important. So that's, that was another blessing in disguise throughout this process because it was not easy in the beginning. It never is when you're going through that type of transition and trying to navigate, how do we do this? Absolutely. Especially, especially since he doesn't even live in the state, you know, he's still much um, active duty military. So I'm just, thankful and blessed that at the end of it, we all came out good. You know, we're all in a better place and a lot happier, healthier. So yeah. Well, you're going to inspire a lot of women. So I thank you. I am positive that this is not, that this is just the beginning of Shane and Linda's journeys together. So yes. um, thank you for coming into the Reboot Revolution. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> all right. No problem. Bye-bye.